Good afternoon, or good morning, or good evening, wherever you are. This is Roger Gilbert. I'm in the Rongo Rongo Live video studios on behalf of International Aquafeed Magazine, and it's my great pleasure today to be talking to a leader in the African Union's development agencies, NEPAD. NEPAD is the organization for new uh, development programs for the African region. And NEPAD is very much focused on technical development. And I'm very happy to have Dr. Hamadi Diop with me. But before I introduce him, let me tell you a little bit about him. He has previously served as the head of natural resources and governance for food security and nutrition program for NEPAD in South Africa. And his position, in that position, he facilitated the development of various clusters, work stream strategies and business plans and guiding the achievement and objectives for aquaculture. Uh, he has also served as the Director of Research and Information Systems in the West African Subregion of Fisheries Commission, a position that coordinates fishery management issues, policy development, capacity building, development of common voices at international fora and for a seven country area of West Africa. Uh, Dr. Nipad is no stranger to uh, either Europe or the United States. He has holds a PhD in Agricultural Economics from Louisiana State University. He also earned his Masters of Science in Economic and Agricultural Economics, both at Louisiana uh, State University. He is a recipient of many grants and his research has been published widely in many scientific journals. He has been a guest speaker in many international conferences and the recipient of a one-year training and coaching mentorship uh, as well. So it's a great pleasure for me to welcome this afternoon or this morning, wherever you may be, uh, Dr. Hamadi. Welcome, Dr. Hamadi. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gilbert. Uh, yes, uh, it has been a while since uh, we met. I think the last time we spoke was uh, in 2017 when... Uh, uh, NEPAD was organizing world, with World Aquaculture Society yes. uh, a big conference on uh, actually the first World Aquaculture Conference uh, uh, in in Africa, which was in Cape Town. Yes. Uh, but since then, I think we just have uh, interacted uh, uh, not consistently. Uh, but it's a pleasure to see you. I'm currently in Washington D.C. where I'm uh, teleworking. Mm. Uh, but it's a pleasure to be talking to you today. Well, thank you. And you're primarily based in uh, South Africa, I understand. Um, uh, and my first question uh, would be, um, how important is the activity of NEPAD in developing agriculture and aquaculture in Africa? Uh, is NEPAD playing a leading role in that regard? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people don't uh, don't know NEPAD that much. Uh, uh, since last year, uh, because of the success of uh, of NEPAD, uh, the African Union head of state have uh, uh, transformed NEPAD into uh, the development agency of the continent. So now NEPAD is called the African Union Development Agency NEPAD, AUDA NEPAD. Since last year, but over the last two uh, decade. Uh, Nepal has been uh, leading uh, with the commission of uh, the African Union uh, Department of uh, Rural Economy and Agriculture and the support of various stakeholders, uh, the implementation of the continental framework on agriculture that we call the CADEP. The CADEP stands for uh, the Comprehensive African Agriculture Development Program. So CADEP uh was endorsed the first uh, cadet uh, program was endorsed in 2003 uh, during a meeting of uh, the head of state and government in uh, malabo uh, uh, and it has uh, about four major uh, intervention areas the first one was uh, to support the continent to increase its uh, productivity agricultural productivity by six percent per annum and uh, based on the science at the time, uh, it was uh, it was agreed that if we increase our uh, productivity by six percent per annum, we should be in a position to meet uh, our food security and nutrition targets. 
so the food security and nutrition target was the second, uh, the second basically um, uh, goal. Uh, but all those goals were uh, framed into also uh, the creation of dynamic market for farmers to be access uh, to be able to access to market mm -hmm. uh, to set the surplus of their production. Um, and also uh, for that also to happen, uh, private sector and public sector investment should be mobilized and supported. So uh, mm -hmm. it was also, uh, there were a target of uh, allocating 10% of member state GDP uh, into agriculture. Mm -hmm. So when those goals were set for uh, the NEPAD uh, created a companion document on fisheries and aquaculture to support the process um, by looking also how uh, fisheries and aquaculture could contribute to food security uh, and then contribute to the target of increasing the productive by 6% per annum. Mm -hmm. So until then, uh, many iterations have gone forward. Uh, NEPAD benefited from uh, different funding from DFID, from uh, the Norwegians and from all the donors, the, the FAO and uh, also the member state support to implement uh, a very, very uh, ambitious and, uh, and, 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 and continent-wide programs on fisheries and aquaculture to support the increase of productivity uh, in fish production in the continent. Mm. So how significant has that been? Have you seen the increase of 6% that you're talking about? Has, uh, is, it, is it meeting those targets? Uh, in 2014, we, uh, we did a continent-wide study uh, to assess what we call the value of African fisheries and the contribution of, uh, of fisheries to, mm. to, to um, the NEPAD GDP, I mean to the African, uh, to the African uh, continent GDP. Uh, the study uh, indicated that the fisheries sector and the aquaculture sectors were uh, generating a value of $24 billion mm. a year. So those $24 billion uh, contributed to 1.26 percent of the African okay. GDP okay. but if we go into the sectoral uh, component we realize that fisheries was contributing to 6.2 uh, percent of the agriculture GDP so fisheries and aquaculture have all have been meeting the target of 6 percent mm -hmm. growth uh, per annum since uh, 2014 Oh, okay. Every year, so we're still on. They're still on target. Are yeah, still almost. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that that must accumulate which into. Is, a yeah, huge which is which is which is good. Yeah. So fish production uh, in the continent basically the there were two phenomena that were uh, competing. The first one is that we realized that the marine uh, harvest has reached is 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 basically plateau, mm. and uh, for many reasons like overfishing, uh, illegal. Uh, poaching of our resources, uh, uh, um, uh, insufficient uh, management uh, capacity, uh, and the list goes on and on and on and on. However, what we have been seeing over the last uh, decade uh, is a rise in uh, in the production of farm fish, mm -hmm. uh, and and that production went from increasing at a rate of let's say. 12% to almost 19 to 20% per year. Mm. And then that productivity uh, of aquaculture-led uh, uh, development has been spearheaded by the private sector, which is very, very, very interesting. Very so good. you have like a, a, the, fish, the aquaculture sector has been confronted uh, with two basically uh, challenges. And um, everywhere where you have like a, a development of a, of, a, of a new sector or a new industry, you have certain challenges that uh, that uh, can create some problems. And in the continent, on in Africa, the two challenges we were faced uh, with are the available the availability of uh, the seeds yeah. for aquaculture growth, yeah. and the second one was the feed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so those were the two challenges that we were facing. Uh, but nowadays, you have like a, a big companies moving into the continent. Uh, and, and, and making that available. We have not figured out yet how to bring the cost down so that it can be widely available, but uh, things are improving. Right. And, and where do you see uh, technology, fish farming technology? I mean, in a uh, developed part of the world, 
I mean, technology plays a very important part in efficiency and uh, lowering cost. Uh, do you, are you focusing on sort of adopting more modern fish farming technologies as you go forward? Well, at the moment, uh, since it's a private sector driven, usually the private sector is the one that brings the, the innovation into, 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 into the efficiency of the sector. Uh, we have been seeing like uh, aquaponic uh, development into the continent. We have been seeing some integrated farming. We have been seeing uh, even at the, at the university level where integrated programs are, are, are being developed. I remember uh, maybe four or five years ago, I visited the University of Ibadan where they have right uh, outside the university a full integrating uh, farm where they were training students on, uh, on the production of fingerlings, uh, on the production of fish feed, uh, on the processing of the fish, uh, on, on, on the purification of the water by having like a, a chickenry there that, where, where basically the dropping from the chickenry, the, the, the chicken uh, were basically uh, purifying the water because they were rich in ammonia. Yeah. Uh, and so you have all those kind of things happening in the continent, uh, but it's mostly private sector led. Uh, so I can anticipate maybe in the year to come that to those innovations, maybe the private sector may move into uh, into bringing um, those kind of technology into the continent. Yeah, well, I, I know that uh, scratting, for instance, is in uh, Africa, Ala Aqua, Renan, and yes. other other companies like this. I mean, uh, that's where the technology uh, is is developed and. Obviously, they they'd be introducing what's needed into the African market. I, I would assume. So, um, yeah, very good to have that um, sort of not just a government-operated uh, development, but also coordinating with uh, the private, private sector. Yeah. Um, I think what. Yes. No, no, please. No, I think what also has happened uh, is that uh, we have seen the some other constraint uh, in, in the development of the market. Uh, those constraints were mostly tied to the enabling environment. Uh, you know, sometimes if you don't have the right policy, you don't have the, the right incentive to bring the private sector, yeah. uh, this may be a hindrance into, uh, into the development of the sector. But in recent years, uh, through basically the support of uh, agency like the AUD and NEPAD, uh, we have created the enabling environment by supporting countries uh, to have the right policy tools, uh, to have the right instruments, uh, supporting them to revise their uh, uh, fishery strategies, their fishery development plans, uh, and then helping them to, to adopt the best practices uh, so that the environment is there. The second thing also we have seen is that uh, because the new sector, uh, you may have a lot of uh, issue of environmental safety. Uh, so to reduce the risk, uh, we have also helped to, to develop frameworks at the continental level. Uh, or norm standard vis-a-vis -vis safety, uh, security to address the issue of bios biosecurity and the like. Yeah. Uh, we have also uh, uh, to uh, I think your uh, uh, charity without borders have been supporting Grow Africa in uh, uh, Nepal. Yeah. And and uh, I, I, and I am not sure whether you are very familiar with the Grow Africa model. But with the Grow Africa model, what we do is like we come into into an, uh, uh, a sector. Uh, bring all this, the, the stakeholders that are operating along the value chain uh, and then try to figure out where the, 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 the challenges are. Yeah. And then based on those challenges now, uh, support, support uh, the stakeholder to, to develop bankable project to address those challenges and also to bring the private sector investment. Yeah. So just to, just to be clear, if a, a company, a commercial company is interested in uh, moving uh, technologies or moving its business into Africa in partnership, would they, you know, obviously there's uh, many countries in Africa, would they mm -hmm. sort of approach NEPAD first or would they, would, how would they connect with NEPAD to get support or encouragement or etc. from NEPAD? Would they do that through the local country? Uh, government or would they come to actually usually usually the the private company so far who have been uh, investing in the continent have done it uh, directly to to their country engagement mm. but what we do is that if a country is a priority uh, like for example uh, if you go to Sierra Leone or Liberia where yeah. uh, Grow Africa is operating now uh, if there is a let's say a fishery 
uh, or a species that, uh, that that is being promoted through aquaculture development. And uh, Go Africa is, uh, is is coming on a demand basis, and the country requires that Nepal come and support them. So when Nepal comes now, uh, if the, the private sector is available at that con uh, uh, at the national level, we will involve the that the, the, that private sector those private sector companies into the discussions that we are having, uh, so that we can have like a, 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 a holistic view on what need to be done at the country level. So that we can address uh, the challenges that the country is facing yeah. in terms of developing its agriculture sector. So I think that's uh, this is a mo mo operandi model uh, that we have because our action at the country level are demand driven. We cannot just come into a country and impose mm -hmm. a country. We tell the country, okay, you need to develop your agriculture. This is what you need to do. The country have to come to us to request for that support. Mm. Okay. Well, and and you're still encouraging these companies to come to Africa obviously and and develop uh, aqua uh, come to africa and develop aquaculture i mean that's still a priority i would have thought uh, yeah aquaculture aqu aquaculture development is, is still a, a big priority uh, in uh, 2014 we endorsed what we call uh, the african union uh, fishery policy framework and reform strategy uh, in which we have about seven uh, seven main focus areas and uh, three cost cutting areas and one of the focus areas is to uh, develop aquaculture in the continent. Okay. Uh, and, and then the development uh, will be led by uh, the setting up of centers of excellences uh, in aquaculture so that that center of excellency will provide with the knowledge, know-how, technology, adoption and the life to guide the continent. Uh, it uh, has some uh, a component on the private sector engagement. Uh, it has some component on uh, how to develop standards for safety. Uh, it has also some component on how to improve uh, inter-regional trade uh, of, of aquaculture product. Yeah. So, so, so we have a whole comprehensive policy framework that gives the guidelines on uh, what needs to be done uh, in terms of aquaculture transformation in the continent. And uh, the agencies like NEPAD are basically leading uh, the continent in terms of providing member state with advisory services uh with support with know-how uh with different tool and instrument and also uh helping them also to mobilize resources uh to to implement those uh those programs uh and then document the the best practices out of those programs uh, so that we can also uh help other member state to to learn from the mm -hmm. successful experiences and uh adopt to those experiences Dr. Marty, it's uh, fantastic talking to you. Thank you for taking the time today. Uh, I think that would give a lot of encouragement to companies to consider their future investments uh, more targeted towards Africa uh, than before possibly, because as you said uh, at the outset that NEPAD is little recognized uh, possibly outside Africa and certainly maybe not in the aquaculture industry globally. Uh, I know from your figures that you're estimating that there's uh, 600 thousand tons of uh, aquaculture fish being produced and if that's increasing at 20 percent per year i mean it's it's a fantastically fast growing market and uh, i wish you well with that uh, we will uh, put in our magazine your contact details and uh, hopefully uh, you'll attract uh, more inward investment from our commercial aquaculture com companies but uh, thank you this afternoon for joining us or today thank you uh, thank you, Roger, for having me and uh, looking forward to collaborating with you in the future. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Dr. Hamadi.